Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Eun Sun. Expectations are the seeds of resentment. They haven't sprouted yet. To quote something I heard recently, I don't even know what my expectations are until they haven't been met. Now, we all have expectations. We all have expectations about our practice, which is what this talk will be involve. Uh, we have expectations about a lot, of, a lot of other things that are not applicable to this setting right here. So let's talk about those expectations on our practice. Now, no one whose face I can see right here lives in a temple. We all have day gigs or school or whatever it might be. And those are the kind of thing that will occasionally prevent us from uh, practicing as hard as we'd like to. Um, there are hindrances to our practice that we just, for practical reasons, are unable to avoid. There's a lot of times, however, that we expect that we're practicing really, really hard. And if we don't expect that we are practicing really, really hard, we expect that we should be. What matters is how we're practicing right here, right now. At this given moment, we are all practicing as hard as we possibly can. And this moment too. And this one. For right now, right here, this is as good as it gets. And right now, none of us have really any expectations about it because we're just doing it. We're not necessarily thinking about doing it. We're just doing it intuitively before any thought is required. We're just practicing. And we'd like to think that yeah, at my day job and school and when I'm having dinner and, you know, when I'm just laying around watching TV, I'm practicing there too. I take my Zen with me everywhere I go. And while that may be an expectation that we put on ourselves, I think in reality we may fall a little short of that. And that's okay. We try and take the proverbial cushion with us wherever we're going. We try and apply that wadu to everything. We try and hang on to it, keep it right in our heart, and ask, what is this, what is this, what is this, as much as we possibly can, except for the fact that sometimes you just got to send that email and somebody wants to know what that is and it isn't the Hwadu that they're referring to. Sometimes we just have to do what we have to do. Even though we might have expectations that would be otherwise. But what's the secret of Zen practice? Accepting reality for what it is right here, right now, from moment to moment. So right there in those email moments, it's an email moment. We just email. If it's the cooking moment, we fully cook. And that's our practice. 
And we don't even necessarily have to think about it as, oh, I'm frying this egg really mindfully. This is my practice right now. When you do it, do it fully, whatever it might be. Experience the moment you're in and that becomes your practice. And there's no expectation required. There's no uh, exterior factors involved. You know deep down if you're just kind of slacking and half-heartedly cooking that thing on the stove and mine just sort of wanders and it's like, yeah, what am I going to watch in TV tonight? I don't know. Oh, damn, that thing burned. <clears throat> not being mindful, not real intense practice at that moment. So we look at that, we bring ourselves back in and crack another egg in the pan and, and you know, do our best to fry that egg very mindfully in that moment, here and now. And if you want it sunny side up, maybe you can even be so mindful that when you take it out of the pan, the yolk doesn't even break. Another expectation, perhaps, but... Uh, <clears throat> not an important one. Um, what brought this all on, you may wonder where this was coming from, and I'll tell you, it came from a place, because I remembered hearing the phrase, practice as if your hair is on fire. And that's sort of a lofty expectation, right? We can practice as if our hair is on fire without being really manic about it. Our hair being on fire could be, you know, mindfully frying the egg or mindfully sending that email or doing something else fully in that moment. But I got curious. I was saying to myself, you know, is that a Dogen thing, practicing as if your hair is on fire? Where, where did this actually come from? And I found it, thanks to the wonderful technology of search engines. So I'm going to read a wee thing for you here. So that pure practice and the way coincide, how should we proceed? Proceed with the mind which neither grasps nor rejects, the mind unconcerned with name or gain. Do not practice Buddha Dharma with the thought that it is of any benefit to others. Clearly, Buddha Dharma is not practiced for one, one's own sake, and even less for the sake of fame and profit. Just for the sake of Buddha Dharma should you practice it. Students, do not practice Buddha Dharma for your own sake. Do not practice Buddha Dharma for name and gain. Do not practice Buddha Dharma for attain, attaining miraculous effects. <clears throat> Excuse me. Practice Buddha Dharma solely for the sake of the Buddha Dharma. This is the way. Skipping down a little bit. An energetic mendicant should examine the aggregates like this. With situational awareness and mindfulness, whether by day or by night, they should give up all fetters and make a refuge for themselves. They should live as if their head was on fire, aspiring to the imperishable state. Thus, a monk Persistence around should view the aggregates by day and night. Mindful alert should discard all fetters, should make himself his own refuge, should live as if his head were on fire in the hopes of the state of no falling away. And there were a couple of translations in there from uh, Bhikkhu Sujato and uh, Tanasaro Bhikkhu, and that's of the Fena Sutta, 
aka the Foam Sutta. And if you haven't read the Foam Sutta, I highly recommend it. Because not only does it have the bit about practicing as if your hair is on fire in it, but it also is the first instance I'm aware of where form, feeling, perception, impulses, and consciousness are marked as characterized, <coughs> excuse me, by shunyata. This idea that, you know, emptiness is like just a Mahayana thing is not really the case. So anyway, that's an aside. That's my soapbox for the evening, those two sentences. But practicing as if your hair is on fire. How do you do it? Whatever it is you're doing, do it 100% at that moment. Cast away those fetters. Cast away the resentments that are the result of expectations. Cast away the expectations. And as Zen Master Sung San was so fond of saying, just do it.